sensory bins are like a learning center in a box. Open the lid and behold, a unique self-contained multi-sensory independent activity. Children ages three and up can use them fairly independently. And they're great to help develop fine or gross motor skills. Use them as a calming activity for an overstimulated child or a quiet time activity. Use them for together play for siblings or for school time for young ones to help teach or reinforce concepts and topics. Now putting a sensory bin together is simple. You'll just need a few, few things. A container, filling material, usually dry or wet, and some discovery items, and potentially some hand tools like scoops or tongs to increase the dexterity difficulty. Now, step one, consider what your activity will be. Start out simply. Remember, you don't have to create these yourself. A big benefit to sensory bins is engaging in the learning, and that can start by creating the activity together. And also, there are a lot of pre-made activities that fit perfectly into a bin, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So first off, decide, is it going to be dry or wet? Dry sensory bins are easy clean. They have a longer shelf life. You can switch out the discovery items and think about your child's age and the level of mess that you're comfortable with. Consider the texture, the color, and your child's individual needs. So let's look at what is in each one of these. I'm pretty excited to dig around. Here we've got one with pom-poms and look, got something to investigate there. Here is some dyed Epsom salt and I found something else that makes a noise. I wonder what that is. Got the same thing in pom-poms here. I found a fairy and I can go play and invent stories with her. What's in the green rice that I made at home? Nothing. Somebody's already been here and investigated that. Then I've got colored Rainbow rice, of course, and look, there are fraction, fraction tiles here. And I can do a fraction activity with an older child. Beans make a great one. And look, here are some building blocks. I can do some math activities with that. And now I've got over here some kinetic sand that really forms and does great things. And I can excavate some monuments. Here's the Sphinx. Now we've got some wet. Wet ones have a lot of excitement and a lot of mess, but they can be really exciting for kids. And here we've got some aqua beads. They start out looking like this, and they'll when they dry up, they'll go back to that but I've got some Dr. Seuss fish here. Cool, that feels really cool on kids' hands. And lastly over here, water's the most commonly used wet bin tool. And look here, oh my goodness, we've got an iceberg. We need to save this guy. Here, I'll use my eyedropper and save him and find the other creatures. Maybe there's some treasure, buried treasure in there. And you probably have manipulatives around the house that can be used in a sensory bin. For example, we have some toys here we can excavate in this bin, use a different tool. Oh, look what I found. Some Uno cards, and we can do number play. Got another one here. We can sort by number and also by color. And I've got something here. What's inside here? Oh, my letter elephants. Look, can I make a word out of these? Oh, I can. Fat, make sure that you change things up. Too much of anything can become unappealing. Make the bins accessible only during specific times. Switch them out occasionally. Add new items. For example, start out with identical plastic counters and then add in different shapes and colors. Put new tasks in the same box. 
and just changing the filler itself from dry to wet can bring in new appeal. Allow your child's interest to determine the time that they spend. Have fun with these. We're pretty sure that sensory bins will make a big splash at your house with a lot of learning at the same time.